Let's give the Lord a great hand clap of praise. I love you, Jesus! Hallelujah! He's worthy of the highest praise. Amen? He's God on time and all the time. He never stops, never fails, always forgives. He's my kind of God. Praise God. I'm excited, hallelujah, for what God has given me for you tonight. And my whole job is to get you excited about it too. <laughs> Praise God. Somebody say, His joy, my strength. I'll praise God. Lord, I'm asking you to help me to do a good job here tonight, that you would just bless, bless the message, anoint, oh Lord, your word is already anointed, anoint this preacher to deliver it, give it according to your perfect will and way, let it be received, because your spirit is in their heart, writing your laws upon them, and let it go according to your perfect will and way, for your glory, in the benefit of your people, in Jesus' name I pray it, amen. We're going to turn to the book of Nehemiah chapter 8, and we're going to go to verses 8 and 10. Nehemiah chapter 8, verse 8 and 10. While you're turning there, I'd like to just thank my pastor for the opportunity to speak to you tonight. I, I, I love to be able to go through the Word of God with the people of God, and it is my privilege to be here, and it is a privilege Nehemiah chapter 8, I appreciate those of you standing for the reading of the word. Nehemiah chapter 8 and verse 8. And so they read in the book of the law of God distinctly. Everybody say distinctly. And gave the sense and caused them to understand the reading. In verse 9, and Nehemiah, which is the Tershatha and Ezra, the priest, the scribe and the Levites that taught the people said unto all the people, This day is holy unto the Lord your God. Mourn not, nor weep. For all the people wept when they had heard the words of the law. In verse 10, And he said unto them, Go your way, eat the fat, drink the sweet, and send portions unto them for whom nothing is prepared. For this day is holy unto our Lord. Neither be ye sorry, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. Let's give him a great hand clap again today. I love you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Turn to your neighbor and just give him a big, goofy, toothy smile, okay? And then shake their hand and go ahead and sit down. <laughs> it feels good to laugh, doesn't it? There's something that happens when you laugh. It's like, uh, you know, it's... it's it's healing for the bones or something, right? It's, it's okay to laugh, especially in church. We're supposed to have a good time. It's supposed to be fun. Praise God. And I want to tell you today that the joy of the Lord is your strength. And I'm talking to you about a mindset change. It's a change that has to happen. It's something that's got to happen inside of you for it to actually work in you. It's got to come from the inside to the outside of you. Amen. The joy of the Lord is your strength. Praise God. It's a mindset change. It's a change from woe is me, look at all that is wrong, to joy is mine. I have discovered a light that illuminates my path. It's a change from looking at our circumstances and feeling like, how did I get here? And how, how could it get any worse than this? To looking at it and saying, oh, praise God, because he has made a way for me. It's a change that occurs when we choose. Amen? Everybody say choose. Everybody say it again. Choose. Say I choose. I love the, the Bible and all the different examples that it gives us about what happens when we choose. Let's look at how God's light is connected to your security. Psalms chapter 119 and verse 105 through 114 Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. I have sworn and will perform it that I will keep thy righteous judgments. Skip down to verse 109. My soul is continually in my hand. 
Yet I do not forget thy law. I get to choose what I want to do. I get to choose how I want to act. I get to make decisions about my life, where I'll go, what I'll think, what I'll do. But I choose to meditate on your law. Oh, my God. Down to verse 114. Thou art my hiding place and my shield. I hope in thy word. Amen. Amen. If you're human, and you are, you've felt down at times. you felt burdened by the weights of life. you felt discouraged by how people have treated you. You have felt this, this, this oppression, if you will, that keeps you in a place where it's difficult to smile, where it's difficult to have joy. But I'm telling you, that there is power and healing in that joy. Letting go of fear, letting go of anxiety of an expected outcome, and just trusting God. <laughs> Man, that is a nice place to be and a difficult place to get to and a harder place to stay. But when you're there, I'll praise God. Doesn't matter what's happening. Doesn't matter what's going on. All you know is God's got it handled, and that's all you need to know. There's joy there. There's peace there. Praise God. Getting rid of self-justification. Everybody say self. Oh, my goodness. This is the one that hunts me. I, I am, okay, I'm confessing my faults because you're my brethren, and I want to be I want to get to heaven, so I'm just going to confess to you. <laughs> Praise God. Oh, so they're like, good, juiciness is coming. <laughs> I, know I forgot what I was going to say. <laughs> I, I'm a, I was going to confess something big, and it was big, I'm telling you. But for the life of me, it just evacuated my mind. <laughs> All right, let's go to the next scripture. Jeremiah chapter 15 and verse 16. Thy words were found and I did eat them. Thy word was unto me the joy and rejoicing of my heart. For I am called by thy name, O Lord God of hosts. <laughs> There's a secret right here for everybody who wants it. It's where your joy is attached to. It's the joy and rejoicing of your heart. And it's your words that I found, O oh God, and I did eat them. I ingested them. I made them part of me. And I decided to be happy. I decided that that's where my joy came. I look at the word of God and I see it shall be well. I look at the word of God and I see adoption. I look at the word of God and I see love your brother and love your neighbor as yourself. I look at the word of God and I see love your enemy. I look at the word of God and I feel like I belong somewhere and that something is for me. <laughs> and I count it all joy. I'm a part of something bigger. I'm a part of something better. I'm a part of something eternal. Oh my God, you can take my life. And I would still be happy because I know where I'm going. I, you can take all that I have. And because I'm tied to the word of God, to what it promises, to what he says. We get it in our heads that our joy comes from acceptance by people. People must accept me in order for me to be happy. If only pastor would call me and tell me to do this or that. If only brother and so-and-so or sister so-and-so, if only my family, if so-and-so would just apologize, oh, if they would just, and I spend my life fretting, wringing my hands, stressed out for no good reason, and it's the joy that I am pushing far away from me, that I'm choosing not to receive. I'm telling you, there is a very important thing that I must do I must untie myself from the icky stickiness of what other people think about me. I have to. I can't be happy. If the only time I'm happy is when all of you are happy, then I, can, I challenge you, name one time when all of you are happy at the same time. <laughs> I'm... I'm a cursed man if I'm going to live my life tied to the emotions and feelings and opinions of others. But if I tie it to the Word of God, His Word is a lamp unto my feet. What did I do? I got 
this morning and I turned the light on. <laughs> Praise God. Reading through the Bible, looking for something for me today. Ha! Thank you, Jesus. I've got some illumination in this dark world. Stuff is coming at me, but I happen to know a God who heals. Stuff is happening to me, but I happen to know a God who saves. Stuff is coming against me, but I happen to know a God who cares. Who cares not just a little bit, but so much that by his stripes, I am healed. Hallelujah. Whoa, if he takes me home today, praise God, I am willing to be absent from this body. And if he chooses to leave me here, praise God, I am willing to proclaim his name. <laughs> Hallelujah. He's worthy of the highest praise. I feel some joy coming on. Hallelujah. I want to be in service to the Lord and faithful in a few things. I want every journey that I take, they want the first step to be with the last step in mind. God's got a plan. God's got a purpose. God's doing something great. He's bigger than our small thoughts. His infinity just is just uncontainable in my finite mind he's got it handled <laughs> somebody needs to hear that today it doesn't matter what happens God is not out of control he did not forget you he has not forsaken you he has not forgotten you you are not lost God is with you. God is your strength. He is your strong tower. He is mighty to save. He is able to do all things. His arm is not shortened that he cannot redeem. And he lives in you. Oh, praise God. The joy of the Lord is my strength. Does that mean that, that uh, when he's happy, I'm strong? The joy of the Lord is my strength? Or does it mean when I'm happy in him, I'm strong? Do we really care? Either way, I'm happy. Either way, I'm strong. I, if he's happy, then I'm strong. You know, when God looks at me and he says, hey, there's, there's my boy. How am I doing? How you doing, son? How you doing, son? <laughs> what were you up to today? I saw you out there blessing people. What's up with that? You know? You think anything is going to come in between him and God? And it ain't going to be because of him. It's going to be because of God. He's looking down. It's his buddy. It's his friend. He's doing the work. And he's, you know, some, some devil jumps out of the creek or whatever. Uh, you know what that devil's doing? He's running the other direction because of who's standing next to him. <laughs> he can't even come close. The joy of the Lord is my strength. When I'm pleasing to God, he looks down on me in favor. You know, he puts us... He puts us to the test sometimes, but never leaves us. Just grows us, stretches us. Yeah, he puts wonderful verses in the Bible. It's like, you know, it's good to not be offended. Ha, huh? how many times just today was I offended? I mean, it's stupid. I'm just telling you, that's the big confession right there. I remembered it. You know, it just happens. It just happens. You can't help it sometimes. It's crazy. Just stupid stuff, and I don't know, just thinking, and I'm like, I'm offended. And my offense is contagious. Did you know your smile is contagious? You looked at each other. I said, give a big, goofy smile. Nobody felt like smiling, but they all just did it, because Brother Kim Maggie said so. And then what did you all do? You reacted to the smile with a real smile and just laughed. It was like, ah, that is funny. You know? It, it's, it's faithful in a few things. I can choose to smile even when I'm not happy. No, I, I don't mean the fake smile, you know. <laughs> the love, you know, but I can choose. It's restoring to me. It's, 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 it's meat. It's love. It's peace. And it's the first step. What is it that we're missing? You know, we like to work on the problem and we like to talk about what do I got to do to make it right? And what's necessary in order to fix this? And how am I going to do this? And how am I going to do that? And we wring our hands and we just wear ourselves out. I'm telling you, joy. You need joy. You need joy. You need joy. Joy is what you need. Brother Kim Maggie, what should I do? Should I get in the Word of God? Tie yourself to it. Read about it. 
Did anybody ever hear of those things? Uh, uh, Amazon makes them. Alexa, the, the like speaker things you talk to. Anybody hear of those? You can say, Alexa, I would like you to turn on Pandora Christian Music. And she goes, Pandora Christian Music? And then it comes on and it plays. You ever hear that? It's a voice control thing for your house. You know what's fun to do? Say, Alexa, tell me a joke. Because she tells the stupidest jokes <laughs> in monotone. It's horrible. <laughs> it's so funny. <laughs> it's like, oh my goodness, why did the two dogs walk into the mall mart? Well, no, you'd think one of them would have seen it, you know. <laughs> They're just horrible joke. I don't know. Sometimes when I'm down, I just, I'm like, Alexa, tell me a joke. <laughs> just lift me up a little bit. Lift my heart up a little bit. My beating heart is necessary to be full of joy because it's contagious. And because the king's business requires haste. 1 Samuel chapter 21 and verse 8. And David said unto Ahimelech, and, there, and is there not here under the hand, under thine hand, spear or sword? For I have neither brought my sword nor my weapons with me, because the king's business requires haste. See, David was on the run from a mad king, and he runs to the priest for food and weapons. And the priest inquires as to why David is by himself, and so David makes up a story to appease the inquisitive priest. The truth of the matter was that Saul was out to kill him. So in reality, the king's business really did require haste. Something was hunting David, his family, his life, Something was out to get them and to hurt them. And he had to move swiftly. That's what haste means. He had to get his butt up and get moving. Praise God. My wife told me today when I told her I was preaching, she said, you better get spiritual. <laughs> I said, that's right. And you know, getting spiritual starts with moving your butt. <laughs> like you get your butt out of bed, right? You got to move. So I got my butt out of bed, <laughs> and I moved. You better get spiritual. David was on the run from a mad king, and the king's business required haste. You got anything under your hand? What are we going to do? Exodus chapter 12 and verse 11, And thus shall ye eat with your loins girded and your shoes on your feet and your staff in your hand, and ye shall eat it in haste. It is the Lord's Passover. This was a day when the children were getting ready to be delivered. There was an angel of death that was going to pass over the city. And it was going to hit the houses. And they needed to just do things in a hurry, right? Verses 33 and 34. And the Egyptians were urgent upon the people that they might send them out of the land in haste. For they said, we be all dead men. See, the angel of the Lord had passed over and had taken the firstborn. And now the children of Egypt were like trying to get rid of the children of Israel. Just get out. Go now. And when, he, when the children went to, to spoil the city, they said, can we borrow some things? And they're like, yes, just take it. And gave them jewelries and, and gold and all kinds, whatever you need. Just take it, just take it, just take it and go. In haste. They went fast. They did it on in, in fast, and the people took their dough before it was leavened, and their kneading trough being bound up in their clothes upon their shoulders. Uh, their bread was, you know, wasn't even leavened. They didn't have time to wait around. Hallelujah for the for the for the for the leaven to take to take action in that bread. They came, they ate flat bread. They ate bread that it was unleavened in verse 39, and they baked unleavened cakes of the dough which they brought forth out of Egypt, for it was not leavened because they were thrust out of Egypt and could not tarry, neither had they prepared for themselves any victual. I want to talk to you a minute about procrastination, about putting off to tomorrow what you could do today. There was a... There was a uh, a, an, uh, a sign on a bulletin board that said uh, procrastination.
praise God. You know, they were supposed to take a one-year-old lamb without blemish and take blood of the lamb and paint the doorposts of the house. They were supposed to cook the meat and eat and with the clothes on, be ready to leave at a moment's notice. They left their home in such a hurry that the bread that they took was unleavened because they could not tarry. And leaven is a type of sin. And if you had leavened something, you would have had to wait for the dough to rise. There was no time for waiting for the dough to rise. There was no time for waiting for that sin to develop in our lives. He wanted you to do it and to do it now. He didn't want you to wait. He didn't want you to wait for the chance of that leaven to come up in your life and and, 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 and infect your entire body. But you knew to do it. You knew how to do it, to do it in haste. Don't just sit there and let that leaven rise. It's the sin within you. 1 Corinthians 6 or 5, 6 and 7 states, You know, know ye not that a little leaven leaveneth the whole lump? Purge out therefore the old leaven that ye may be a new lump. The children of Israel had no time to sit and wait because of procrastination. A lot nearly lost his life and his family in his city. You know, Lot lived in that city, and it was a sinful city, and they did horrible things, and it sounds like America today. And he just relaxed in that environment. You know, he learned how to live with spirits that he should have casted out. He learned how to allow into his life a way of thinking that allowed for things. And he came this close to losing everything. We have a prairie dog town near our house. And every year, the prairie dogs go on a a great prairie dog migration. It's true. I call it the Great Prairie Dog Migration of 2016. It was the one that was horrible. You see, these prairie dogs start out in this farmer's field, and this farmer's field is full of grass, and the grass is green and tall, and the prairie dogs in the spring are eating grass, but it's growing faster than they can eat it, so they're fat little prairie dogs. And they're happy little prairie dogs, and fat, happy little prairie dogs breed. And you get more fat, happy little prairie dogs out the deal. It's a mystery of science. (laughs) And these fat little prairie dogs, they just do what fat little prairie dogs do. They eat and they eat and they eat. And as across the street are the well-watered lawns of Arrowhead. (laughs) And the grass is short over there, so it's not very compelling, but it's very green. And you can smell the water wafting over the roadway to your side of the road and As summer grows on, and those prairie dogs just, they clean out their food supply. And there's always that one prairie dog that you see, and he's built his house right next to the highway. And him and his little cute, pudgy little prairie dogs, babies, play right next to the road. This is not a good equation. I say to myself, why did they build their house so close to the world? (laughs) Why did they have to be right next to it? You know? Why did they have to? I mean, it's practically in their house. No. Prairie dogs, they don't even crunch when you run them over. They just squish. It's like a jelly donut. It's horrible. I feel terrible. And I'm always slowing down. Hey, 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 hey. Get... I don't want to squish one. But there's always evidence. And as that food supply gets less in the well-watered lawns of Arrowhead, there's always that one prairie dog that makes it too. And he always ended up in my yard. <laughs> I'm like, don't you be digging a hole. I'll tell you about well-watered stuff. He, you know, but they just... They just, there's this period of time where they're crossing that road. They have gotten so used to the cars and so used to the travel and so used to the, to the noise that they make that they don't even see the danger anymore. And they run out in the road, and I tell you, 
prairie dogs don't have a chance. I don't care if it is a Prius. No chance. It might as well be an 18-wheeler. It just, it's got the same end result for that prairie dog. Why? Why? Stop. Little prairie dogs. I was trying to explain responsibility to somebody the other day. And I, I said, you see those prairie dogs? You, see, you know they're going to run out in the road, and you know they're going to get run over. It happens every year. You know, and, and we love the furry little fellows. Because we do. I realize not everyone does. It's like prairie rats, you know. <laughs> Should we put a fence up along the road and protect them? You know, is it our responsibility? <laughs> and if I was in Boulder County, I'd have to really be careful about how I preach right now. <laughs> we were in Boulder. I'm sorry, I am all over the map tonight. But we were in Boulder County and they were putting up some kind of building and they had a permit to go and relocate the prairie dogs. You couldn't build, they couldn't doze the field until the prairie dogs had been moved. <laughs> I'm sorry, I don't understand that. What cracked me up is they got this guy out there with a vacuum and he's <laughs> sucking these prairie dogs at like Mach 2. Whap! And, <laughs> and then they go... Matthew chapter 28, or chapter 8, verses 21 and 22. And another of his disciples said unto him, Lord, suffer me to go first and bury my father. But Jesus said unto him, follow me and let the dead bury their dead. Now that's a tough one. But God said, look, what I've required for you to do, I need you to do now. This is not about waiting till later. This is about doing it now. There is, there's nobody guaranteed tomorrow. Nobody. You don't know. I just buried my 44-year-old brother-in-law. You don't know. Felix missed out on the greatest opportunity of a lifetime. Acts chapter 24 and verse 25. And as he reasoned of righteousness, temperance, and judgment to come, Felix trembled and answered, listening to Paul's words, Go thy way for this time, and when I have a convenient season, I will call for you. Felix. You're trembling under the truth of God from the man of God who's calling you out. He's calling you into an eternal place of blessing and you're looking for a convenient time. <laughs> Hallelujah. I went, when I went to get baptized, brother said, we're going to get, get you baptized. I said, let's get baptized. I want to get baptized now. He said, well, you know, it's kind of cold this time of year. Let's find some place that has a hot tub. I said, fine. Let's find a place that has a hot tub. But if you can't find one, let's find some place that has water. <laughs> I ended up getting baptized in Horsetooth Reservoir with ice around the edge of the lakes. And I remember I was so excited to get baptized, enter into covenant with God, that I walked down into the water and those shooting pains from that freezing water shot up my thigh. felt like warmth to me. <laughs> it's true. The guy that was baptizing me, he's like puts his toe in. I'm like, that's a mistake. Just get in. <laughs> he's like, oh, brother. <laughs> and he waded out into the water with me. Oh, my goodness. I was hugging him as I came out of the water. He was hugging me for warmth. <laughs> Praise God. When dealing with the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, haste is a requirement. When the Lord Jesus is dealing with our hearts, make haste. Not nonchalantly. Don't slowly put off Jesus. Procrastination means to put off something. Don't do it. You can't afford it. 
Zacchaeus didn't halt between two opinions, but rather came down and received the Lord joyfully. Make haste to come down, for today I must abide in thine house. And he made haste. I can see the little guy hopping out the tree. Woo! <laughs> you see the, I, my house, you know, he's talking to everybody. We often put things off until tomorrow, but tomorrow, you know what, might not come. Paul emphasizes the need for haste when he said, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. James wrote, whereas ye know not what ye shall be on the morrow, for what is your life? It is even a vapor, and it appeareth for a little time, and then vanishes away. In his book, Being the Best, Dennis Waitley writes, When you stop to think about there is no such thing as a future decision. You face only present decisions and what will affect you and what will happen in the future. Procrastinators wait for the right moment to decide. And if you wait for that perfect moment, you become a security seeker who is running in place, going through the motions, and getting deeper into a rut. If you wait for every objection to be overcome, I will attempt nothing. My personal motto is stop stewing and start doing. Today and now are in your hands. What will you do with this opportunity? You've got troubles in your life. I know you do because I've got troubles in my life. You, you think you got troubles? I can show you somebody who was led to a cross and nailed there. So don't tell me about your troubles. You're not above your master, you Christian. <laughs> so you got troubles. I know you do. I got troubles. And what are we going to do with them? I'm telling you, we need to get outside of ourselves. Get outside of our crazy thinking. And we need to find joy. Because the joy of the Lord is my strength. And if I can have a little joy in the midst of my trouble... And I can walk with peace that passes understanding and just laugh and smile at life when my kids are mad at me, when the world is mad at me, when things aren't going right. I can make it through because he's my strength, because he's my hope, because he's my song. And my kids will look at me and they won't understand, but they'll copy me because I'm Papa Duck. And everybody follows Papa Duck. Papa Duck gets in the water, everybody else gets in the water. That's how it works. Papa Duck keeps a good spirit in the middle of a not easy to keep a good spirit situation. Guess what? Everybody is like, hey, this isn't so bad. You know? We had a, we had a 4th of July one time. And uh, we lived in the mountains. And it was dry. So fireworks are a bad idea. But my kids wanted fireworks. So I bought a fireworks set of little bitty fireworks, like little cones, you know, they went, you lit them and they went, <laughs> <laughs> it was just about it. <laughs> sparklers, you held them in your hand, little ones, sparklers. I mean, it was, it was, you know, and I made the biggest deal out of it. Oh, I got fireworks. Kids were little. They didn't know the difference. We got the hose out and we drenched our, our driveway, made a nice big wet spot. We laid down the rules, no sparklers beyond the edge of the wet. And when you're done, put them in the bucket. We, we lit off dozens of little... <laughs> we had a phenomenal time. My kids hadn't seen fireworks up close, oh, thank God. <laughs> we watched them from a distance. And so, you know, you know how they're, they're like... <laughs> they're like quarter size. I got 50 cent pieces. <laughs> and I made a big deal. And I kept my joy. And I kept my spirit. I felt kind of lame. I was kind of happy about all the money I saved. <laughs> but I felt kind of lame. And, and I could have just apologized to them. Oh, kids, these are lame. This is so bad. This is going to be hard. Oh, next year will be better. I know it's pathetic. We didn't do that. We got down on the ground, and we got as close as we could get without Dad worrying about eye sockets being burned out. And whoa. It was cool. It was fun. They remember. 
the sparklers. Every year, to this year, my kids are like, my youngest is 22. Dad, are we going to get sparklers? <laughs> you bet. We get the grill, open the grill, take the grill off, turn that flame on, it was sparklers. Tell us the rules, Dad. They don't need to know the rules. They know the rules. I told them every year. I'm done with the sparkler, put them in the bucket. Nobody running around in their bare feet tonight. We did that one year. The urgency is great. We need to do it in haste. We need to find our joy tonight. <laughs> Before we encounter another relative. Before we bump into another person. We need to find our joy tonight. We need to... We need to get it deep in our hearts and just tie ourselves to His Word and trust Him for the big things. Fear not who can kill your body. Fear Him that can kill it and then put your soul in hell. Okay, uh, that puts some perspective on it. I, I trust you, God. You said my soul's in heaven. I get to go with you. <laughs> Man, does that make me reckless sometimes. Praise God. If we could get somebody to come and play I just think we need to spend some time finding some joy I don't care what it takes you know what do it think it say it force it until it happens on the outside you may be up here doing this oh he said stomp your feet and clap your hands and I don't feel like it today but I ain't gonna quit until I feel like it today you think I'm fooling around. Brother Kim ain't done fool around like that. Everybody's going to be up here stomping their feet and clapping their hands. <laughs> Paul wrote to Timothy as he sat in a Roman jail in the closing moments of his life. Do thy diligence to come before winter. The urgency of his words inspired him. Get your butt up. Time to be spiritual, church. You know, if you're going to be spiritual, you got to get your butt up. you got to get out of your seat and start moving. That's a hint. It's just us. We're just family. Man, nobody cares what you do. If you don't know the dance moves, you can make them up. Seriously, I will come next to you and try to copy you because <laughs> I don't know them either. Travel would have been impossible. The seas upon which Timothy would have had to sail would have been the turbulent time because winter was coming, because it was that season, because trouble was in the air, because it just, it was rough. But the message was clear. Come before winter. Don't let that family relationship end with a frown. You find your joy and smile and hug and bless and shake hands and hug <laughs> don't let it go by don't let another moment go by with that neighbor not having had the, is it a pineapple upside down cake do you have one of those maybe take it to your neighbor The seasons of life sometimes make the roads to cross hard to travel. And the cares of this world entangle us, but there's a secret. It's called the joy of the Lord. <laughs> the joy of the Lord.